Okay. Now I talk about this method of evangelism called experience God evangelism. Nataka niongea kuhusu injilisti kwamba kumuisi Mungu katika injilisti. Experience God evangelism. Kumuisi Mungu kwa injilisti. Not only is it a method of evangelism. Not only is it a method of evangelism. Not only is it a method of evangelism. A way of evangelism. It's also a way of raise up people's spiritual life. Now in 1998 when the evangelist lay hand on me. Immediately experienced a great power like electricity zoom. And the love of God filled my heart. And I started to pray for a long time. To keep the presence of God. And God has prepared for me to be able to use the you know the anointing of the Holy Spirit for ministry. Because in a short time, in a, just a few days, one of my church members asked me to pray for her to cast out demons. And it was my first time ever. And I lay hand on her and cast out the demons. And she went, felt power, went through her. And she felt the uh, evil power leading her. I also prayed for the people who were present. And they also said that they experienced the power of God. So I said, I don't have to wait for a long time. I can start now to serve under the power of the Holy Spirit. And then I started to pray for some people. And two persons cry for one hour when I pray for them. I asked them what happened. They said all the sadness in the past came out. And they felt the burdens go away and they feel free. So I said, wow, this is great. And I started to pray for all the people in my church. Also when other people come to the church, I also pray for them. I notice when I lay hands on people, I can feel power between my finger and the, and the person. So I ask them, have you experienced anything? And then they said, they experience the peace or the love or the joy. Mm. And I started to use it with non-Christians. And they also experienced the presence of God. So I said, you know, this is what the Bible promised. And that we can experience the work of God. And God has blessed you now. Na Mungu amekubariki sasa. Do you want God to continue to bless your whole life? Unataka Mungu abariki maisha yako yote. And then when they say they're willing, na kama uko unahitaji, I lead them to believe in Jesus. Niliwaongoza kumwamini Kristo Yesu. So I tried, started this method of evangelism by praying for people. Nilianza hii hii I was able to lead many people to Christ. I also train many people to use this method of evangelism. Also, I could raise up Christians to carry the power of God to pray for people. I also train them to do counseling. And then every week now, there are people coming to our group to, uh, to ask for deliverance or prayer. 
Kwa kila juma kuna kikundi kinakuja wanauliza ukombozi wa maombi. So every week kila juma some of my members and myself will pray for different people. Washirika wangu pamoja na mimi tunaombea watu. Also when we go to the mission field we pray for people. Hata tunapoenda mkutano wa nje tunaombea watu. And brought changes to many people. Na tunakuwa na ushirika na watu wengi. And then my prayer team they become very equipped. Na waombezi wangu wanawajibika sana. It becomes a habit to pray for people. Inakuwa ni tabia ama ni ratiba ya kuombea watu. If you have a group of people like that in your church. Kama uko na watu kama hao kanisani mwako. Your church will be able to reach out to more people. Ukani salako litafikia watu wengi sana. And you can actually train everyone to be able to do that. Na utaweka mmoja katika mafunzo ya kufanya ipo. And I found that many people after experience of Holy Spirit. Na watu wengi wanapo hisi wepo wa roo mtakatifu. When they pray for people, the people can experience the presence of God. Wanapo mbea watu watu wana hisi wepo wa mungu. So a person doesn't have to be filled the Holy Spirit for a long time. Rasa mtu haitaji kukamu da mrefu kujaswa na roo mtakatifu. Do you want your church to be filled with people like that? Unataka kanisa lako lijae na watu kama hao. And then you have confidence in the ministry. Na ukona ujasiri katika uduma. Let me tell you, every week there are people who come for help. Wacha ni wambie kila juma kuna watu amba wanakuja kwa jiri ya msahada. Even here in Kenya, I've received some calls. Ata hapa Kenya na pokea na watu wa kinipigia. And on the way here, I was counseling two people on the floor. On the phone. Nilipo kwa na kujata nilikuwa na shauri watu ingine kwa runulu. Hallelujah. And you too. Na wewe pia. Okay, so here I now I talk about this experience God evangelism. Na hapa naongea kusi ya kwamba kumuisi mungu katika wingilisti. First point I want to say is God can be experienced. Mkitu ya kwanza nataka na kwangu na weza kumuisi mungu. And here are some Bible verses that you can write down. Na kuna kuna kala za Bibili unaweza weka mahali ya puani kama hali. You don't have to turn the Bible; just write down the verse. Na taka wandi kitu hizo bitabu chini. So when people experience this work, you can tell them it's work; it's God working in you. Na ili akombo watu atakapo isi utawambia kwamba ni mumba na itenda kazi Danielu. Okay, John 14 verse 27. Yohana kumi na ine shiri na saba. There it says that peace I live with you, my peace I give you. Inayo sema amani na wapaeni, ni amani yangu na wapanyini. So when people say I feel peaceful. Na umutu wana sema na isi amani. I feel calm. Na isi utulipu. I feel quiet. Na isi unyamavu. You can tell them Jesus said I give you my peace. Utawambia kwamba yesu waka sema na wapa amani yangu. So Jesus has blessed you. And the second verse, Matthew 11:28. Na kero na kala la pini ni matayo kumi na kumi na moja aya shirina nane. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Ujeni kwangu aliole mewa na mizigo mizito na mimi na roapa pumuziko. Now many people pray, and then they feel burdens go away. The heart feel lighter. Actually, on the way to lunch just now, Pastor Stephen just told me he felt lighter. Yeah. <laughs> and then I told them, this is what Jesus said. When you come to Jesus, all you who are weary and burdened will be set free. Unapo kuja kwa Yesu, kamo mebebeze shula na mizigo mizito, yei atakueka huru. And then Romans 5.5. Na warumi tano tano. The last part it says, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Upendo wa mungu mewachilia moyoni mwetu kwa roho mtakatifu. Some people feel comforted. Watu ingine wanaisi wamefarijika. They feel love. Wanaisi kupendua. And then we can tell them God has said that the Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into your hearts. Na unaweza kwambia kwamba roo mtakatifu yesu wamesema kwamba roo mtakatifu atawe kwa ndani ya meo yosenu. And then Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. 
Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, but also to heal the brokenhearted, to comfort all who mourn, and the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So this is inner healing. That people feel comforted. The sadness go away. They feel the joy of the Lord. We can tell them this verse. And then some people say, I feel comfort to the body. Many people say, I feel very light. Psalm 16, verses 8 to 9. There is a sense that David always put the Lord in front of him. And then my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices, and my body will also rest secure. So with the presence of God, the heart is joyful. And the body will also rest securely. The body feels very comfortable. Now some people say, well, Jesus only helps us spiritually. But who created the body? Why can't God also bless the body? Uh -huh. And the Bible also said God can heal a body. So when we pray, we, we feel comfort to the body. That's very normal. Uh -huh. And then the ability to cast out demons and pray for the sick. Mark 16. Begin at verse 15 to 20. 15 to 20. Now here Jesus said, Go to all creation to preach the gospel to them. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. And then miracles will follow those who believe. Uh -huh. And the Bible defines what kind of miracles. In Jesus' name, you cast out demons. <laughs> you lay on the sick, they'll be healed. So here it talks about who can lay hand. Who can have miracles? What does the Bible verse say? Who? Pastors? Pastors? Believers? Believers. All who believe will have miracles. How many of you believe that you can have miracles? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now let me ask you, how many of you have miracles when you pray for people? How many have miracles happen when you pray for people. Okay, very good. But not everyone. So wish everyone should have miracles. Not only everyone here, but your church members. If everyone in your church has has miracles, you know, you can put it on YouTube. Many people will watch it and ask for your help. If your church has miracles all the time, the church will be very alive. Everybody, you know, every day people will see people heal. You know, I pray for people. I, I have seen cancer healed. Instantly. I have seen people with uh, a stroke and 
half the body cannot move so much. And then after the prayer, they can lift them up. <coughs> The arms and the legs can move. People who have pain on a knee for over 10 years. And then heal and walk without pain. And there was one person with shaking hand for 40 years. And it was healed. People with poor eyesight could see clearly. Mm. That I've seen all kinds of miracles. Imagine in your church every week there are miracles. People will bring their friends to the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then the Bible in Mark 16 verse 20. Mark 16 verse 20. And then it says that the signs, the miracles, to, is to verify the word of God. Mm. We must know that miracles are not apart from the word of God. It's to show that the word of God is true. And God is true. So people say, yes, I want to believe the Bible. Okay, now I'm going to give you verses that tell us that evangelism is not just by word of mouth. Because in many churches they think evangelism is just by speaking. In Romans 15 verse 18 to 19. There is says that Paul said that I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God. But what I've said and done by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Spirit. So he has led Gentiles to follow God mm -hmm. by what he said and what he, he did. Uh -huh. And what, what did he do? Powers of signs and miracles uh -huh. through the power of the Spirit. Uh -huh. So if someone says evangelism is just by the word of mouth, or just by the word of the Bible then you show in this verse mm. and also 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 2 to 5 now this verse says in verse 2 for I have determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified mm -hmm. and people say well Paul only knows Jesus and him crucified so he doesn't know the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. but in verse 4 he continues saying and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the power of the Spirit and of power that your faith may not be in the wisdom of man but in the power of God. So here he said that 
death. It's not just with words. Mm. But in a demonstration of spirit and of power. Mm. So when Paul said that I only know Jesus and him crucified. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know the Holy Spirit. Nor he doesn't know the Father. Because Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit. Okay, so these are the Bible verses that support that people can experience God. And then now I talk about how to use it, how to use this method. Number one, to build up relationship with people and listen to people and respond to people. So talk with the people around you, make friends with them. Listen to the needs, listen to the situation. And then when they say they have difficulties, don't, don't respond with teaching. But respond by saying, oh, I know it must be difficult for you. Now, it's, many Christians have this habit. If someone says, I'm sick, or I have some problems at home, the Christian immediately will say, pray to God, God will help you. Now, it's true, but the person is not ready yet. Now even when a Christian says, oh, I, I'm sick. Or maybe I have cancer. Or something happened to my family members. And he comes to church and you say, let's pray. Now imagine, uh, some, something happened to you at home, very serious. And you tell the people, people just say, pray. But another person says, Oh, it must be difficult to you. Mm -hmm. When you have this health problem, or, you, or something happened to your family, it must make you feel unhappy. Now, when persons talk like that, how do you feel? Yeah, you feel relieved. When people know your feeling, right? Now, like you are pastors here, and you share with someone, oh, it's so difficult to build up the church. And the church members say, you pray more, you don't, you, you pray too little, pray more. And and then another person says, Pastor, I know you have worked very hard. And some of these people don't respond. So it must make you feel very difficult. And I support you. I'll pray for you. I'll help you. And how do you feel? Much better, eh? You turn around, no pastor like people to tell them, pray more. But pastor like to say that to people. When people are difficult, they just say, pray more. <laughs> you know, one time I shared this with a pastor. He, he was not convinced. Until when his mother called her, called him. And the mother said to him, son, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this thing. The mother keep talking to me. And then he said to his mom, 
Mom, I'm growing up now. Please don't mother me. And then he said to me, now I understand when someone, you know, just keep teaching you. You don't necessarily feel encouraged. But when people understand your needs and problems, you feel more comforted. So as pastors, as Christians, we should learn to listen to the feeling of the person. Sasa kama wa Kristo, kama wa chungaji, na itaji tusikia hisia za watu. When someone's parent just died, mzazi ya mutu akifa. Imagine your parent just died. Kumbuka tu mzazi wako amekufa. And someone says he's now in heaven. Na mutu na kuambia sasa akumbiguni. Don't cry. <laughs> but I miss him or her. <laughs> but if that person say, you must miss him or her. <laughs> and you love him so much. <laughs> and he's not with you now. <laughs> then you miss him. <laughs> Do you feel better that way? <laughs> I mean, when someone can understand your feeling. <laughs> Do you feel better? Yes. And, and then he can say he's now rejoicing in heaven, right? Yes. And we can also pray for the person too. And not just tell the person to pray. Tell the person to pray is the law. Pray. Do it. I say I pray with you is Praise. Mm. Now, so this is very important to teach. Mm. Because some Christians, when they do evangelism, they offend the non-Christians. Mm. And they'll say, Christians don't have feelings. <laughs> That way, they won't be open to Christians. But if the Christian learn to respond to the feelings of people, and the people around you will say, the Christians are caring. Now, let me, I'll say some words, you know, to Empathize with the person who just say with me. I know it's difficult for you. Say it. I know it's difficult. I know you don't feel so well. I know you don't. I know it makes you feel unhappy. I know I know you miss that person. I know you miss that person. I know you would worry. I know you were. Now, it doesn't mean I encourage him to worry. Mm -hmm. But it's a fact that when people lose the job, they will worry. Mm -hmm. There is no one in the world when they lose the job and then immediately they rejoice. Mm -hmm. It takes time for them to trust in the Lord, right? Mm. Now, just doing this alone already is good evangelism. Mm. So the first point is listening to people respond to the needs, to their feelings. That we tell them that we know your feeling. It's not easy. Mm. Okay, the next point, number two. We can share that we have, or someone has similar experience as that person. For instance, the person said, I have much burden. And then you say, I have had burdens too. And then we share how we experienced the Holy Spirit and how we were set free. 
na kutamwanzia jinsi ya kuhisi Roho Mtakatifu na Roho Mtakatifu atapweka huru. Osoman ka safari abda mtu ako katika mateso. Or we pray for someone and then they were safari. Ama unaombea mtu na kana kuwa huru. So the second is prayer and it's sharing. Ya pili ni kushiriki. And then the third ya tatu is we ask the person are you willing that I'll pray for you? Unamuuliza kwamba kama unahitaji nitakuombea. For your sickness, kwa ajili ya magonjo yako. For your burdens, kwa ajili ya shida mizigo zako. And then if the person is willing the next step is to pray for that person. Sasa kama huyu mtu anahitaji unaweza kumuombea. When you pray for the person, unapoombea huyu mtu, when you want to be connected to God with your spirit, kama unataka unganike kwa Mungu na roho wako. Don't just say many words. Usiseme maneno mingi. Now sometimes when people pray for other people, watu wengine wataombea watu. They use many words. Wanatumia maneno mingi. Oh Lord Jesus heal him. Oh Bwana mponye. Take away the burdens. Tayaka toa hizo mizigo. Help him in his needs. Msaidie katika mahitaji yake. Please open his heart. Tafadhali fungua moyo wake. Yeah, if you keep talking and talking then you're just praying with your mind. Oh na poendelea kuongea na kuongea. Unaomba tu na mawazo yako. It's better to pray to lead the person to trust in Jesus. Ni vizuri kuongoza huyu kumuelekeza kuunganika pamoja na Kristo Yesu. In a relaxed way. Katika njia ya utulivu. Oh Jesus right here. Kwamba Yesu mahali hapa. Thank you Lord for coming. Asante kwa kukuja. We trust in you. Tunakuamini. And enjoy you. Na tunakufurahia. We put our burdens in your hand. Tunaweka mizigo zetu mikononi mwako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus loves us. Yesu anatupenda. Jesus cares about us. Yesu anatushughulikia. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So you can sing some simple song with them. Unaweza imba wimbo kwa rahisi sana na wao. At the same time your spirit ascend to God. Na hiyo wakati roho wako anamwimbanika pamoja na Mungu. The Lord is loving me. Mungu ananipenda. The Lord is blessing me. Mungu ananibariki. The Lord is with me. Mungu ako pamoja na mimi. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. So we learn it to pray in a relaxed way unaomba katika njia tulivu believing that god is right here unaamini mungu yuko hapa and have faith in him na uko na imani ndani yake to me faith is this na kwangu imani ni hii when god works i relax mungu anapotenda kazi mimi natumia now many people think of faith like that watu wengine waamini katika imani hivi I have to have strong faith. <laughs> <laughs> Stronger faith. But faith is just Lord when you work. <laughs> I just relax. <laughs> it's like someone says <laughs> when you trust in your father <laughs> when he says he'll come <laughs> he'll for sure come. When he says he'll do something, for sure he'll do it. So when you pray to the Father, for sure he will work. Now sometimes, it might not come the way that we want. Sometimes I pray for sick people, they're not healed. The Bible has talked about Paul went to Galatia and he was sick when he first went there. Na bibili naongea kuhusu Paulo akaenda kule wa Galatia na alikuwa mgonjwa. And Timothy has been sick many times so Paul said you can drink a little wine. Na Paulo Timotheo alikuwa na ugonjwa sasa Paulo akamwambia unaweza kunywa kidogo. God may not walk the way that we want. God may not walk the way we want. Ya kwamba Okay. Unaweza fanya kazi vile unavyotaka. But God will work. Mungu afanye kazi jinsi vile tunavyotaka. For sure he will work. Kwa kweli atafanya. 
He can give him peace. Take away the burdens. Now, if someone says, I haven't experienced anything, don't say you have no faith. That's condemnation. You just say, it doesn't matter. God has heard your prayer. You keep praying to Him, He'll continue to bless you. Okay? Now, the next step, at the end of the prayer, then you say, Please keep your eyes closed. Please. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Now, this is very important. Ask them to say with you. So, first is, keep your, please keep your eyes closed. And then, say it, say it. Say it. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Okay. Now, why do we ask? If you don't ask him, I forget. Mm -hmm. And why keep the eyes closed? Because when he opens the eyes, he forget about what happened. <laughs> and he's distracted. Yeah, yeah. So you say, keep your eyes closed. <laughs> now, if the person doesn't know how to answer, then you can say, have you experienced anything in your heart and over your body? Or you can say, have you experienced any peace or burdens go away or comfort? This is what most people experience. And if the person says, yes, I have experienced something, mm -hmm. now notice I use the word experienced. Mm -hmm. I did not use the word, how do you feel? <laughs> experience means experience something God has done in you. Mm. Because in the Bible, there are cases when people are healed and then they believe in Jesus. Mm. When Lazarus was raised from the dead, many Jews believe in Jesus. Mm. And then when Paul performed the miracles and raised from the dead, many people believed. And the man with the demons was healed, uh, the driven demon law, and he went to many places to tell what Jesus has done for him. So these are experience. But if the person doesn't understand, then you can say, what do you feel? The reason why I say, I don't say, how do you feel first? Because some people might say, you do evangelism by feeling. I'm leading people to experience God. Experience could include feelings. Could, could include healing. Demons driven out. But part of it is feeling. And then when the person says, I've experienced something, then you use the Bible verses I gave you earlier. And tell them, this is what Jesus said, he'll give you peace. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus taking away your burdens. This is Jesus healing you. If Jesus has blessed you like this, do you want Jesus to bless you from now on? And if the person is willing, then explain that Jesus has died for us to forgive our sins and give us all blessings. And ask him if he is willing to pray with you. To trust in Jesus as his Savior. Okay? Now, I'm going to demonstrate this.
Nataka ni dirisha Wacha nionde wakati We almost have to go Now, let me let me say this Basically the method is very simple Nataka ni tumia mpana mbao raisana Is to listen to the person Nukusikiza mtu Respond to the feelings Na wewe unajibikia maitaji yake And share Na wewe unayusiana na ye And invite to pray Na hata uombe na yeye after praying, ask what they have experienced. If they have experienced something, tell them it's God working in their life. And then ask them if they want Jesus to bless their whole life. Now, you, you, need, to do, you, know, you need to do this yourself. And train your members in anointing. Na wewe ukaweze kufunza na wapuzi wako na upako. Have them practice praying for one another. Wacha wakawe na mazoea kumbia mmoja kumungine. And telling each other whether they have experienced something. Na kuuliza mmoja kumungine kama wamehisi kitu. When they have this practice every week. Na wakiwa na hii kueka kwa manani kila juma. Then they will get used to doing it. Hawa watakuwa wamezoea kukitumikia. I have done it so many times, hundreds of thousands of times. So I get used to it. Okay, now, there's then two persons, one male and one female can come out and I demonstrate praying for people. And then after, and then after we leave, you can practice uh, Pastor Stephen can guide you to practice, but first two persons can come up. And any two persons are demonstrate. Because I want to show you how what I do when I pray for people. Okay. Now, when I pray for people, in the first thing I will say, Jesus is here loving you. Jesus wants to bless you. He's right here. So in your heart, if you say, Jesus, I need you. And the boss say, Jesus, I need you. And the boss come and walk with us. Say, Jesus, I need you. I want you. Nina Puitaji. Please come, Lord Jesus. Tafadali Yesu Christo Kuja. So in your heart, you hunger for God. Sasandani mwe wako kuna shauku kwa jiri ya buwana. You want God. Kuna muitaji buwana. So please close your eyes. Tasa fungeli macho enu. Relax your person. Relax totally. And you have to tulia, tulia. And then, you know, I can use simple prayers or simple songs. Oh, can can a, a brother come out and hold the mic for me? Hallelujah. 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 Now, when I pray for people, first thing I do is I open my heart to God. And relax. And don't think about the result. And just believe that Jesus right here. That I believe that God wants to save them. So I relax myself. And pray to Jesus as a, like a person. He's standing right here. He wants to bless me. Many people pray it like it's like pointing to the air. Many people say thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> 
But think of God in front of you. You don't have to think. You don't have to think about the face. Just think of Jesus here. And your spirit is poured out to him. And let him come to bless you. Okay, and then when you've done that, when you've done that, and then you can lay it on them. Okay, and then now, if they are non-Christians, me, you ask, is it okay for me to lay hand on you? To get the permission. And then if possible, especially for members, they should lay hand on the same sex. But for us, we have no choice. <laughs> but keep ourselves clean. Amen. If you, that's true. If when you pray for a very sexy lady, if you have thirty thoughts at the same time, God doesn't like that. And it also will put us in temptation. So don't pray for people alone. Don't pray for people of the opposite sex alone. Okay, so now I'm just relaxed. I'm just relaxed. Oh, I think of God descending. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you both to pay attention when I lay hand on you. How long does it take for you to experience, feel this power coming to you? Okay. Come, Lord Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We want you, Jesus. Come and bless us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, please keep your eyes closed. And I'd like to ask you, have you experienced anything during the prayer? Okay, you can. Whoever, which one of you, any one of you can say first. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to do the prayer. 
Jesus said, Jesus said, peace I give to you. And the Bible says that, uh, that he will give you the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So give you, the Lord give you the joy that's very great. And the Bible says that he will give you the joy of gladness. This is what Jesus said that come all you who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest and he'll set you free. So Jesus has blessed you like this. You want Jesus to continue to bless you? Now I'm pretending they're not Christians. Okay. And um, you know, uh, Jesus really cares about you. Yes, so who should be created? He created us. Alibumba. And he knows your needs. He, he has the ability, the power to help you. And he has died on the cross to pay for the price of our sins. We should be punished. But now Jesus has been punished for us. So do you want Jesus to bless you? Very good. Now you can follow me in a prayer. And you pray wholeheartedly. And God will bless you. Okay, now you all can follow me. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you and thank you. I praise you and thank you. We experience your presence during the prayer. You are real to bless us. You are real to bless us. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For dying on the cross for our sins. We are sinners. We are sinners. We have sinned against you. We have sinned against you. We have hurt other people. We have hurt other people. Please forgive our sins. Please forgive our sins. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We want to follow Jesus. We want to follow Jesus. We want to go to church. We want to go to church. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now have you sincerely prayed this prayer? Oh yes. Oh, congratulations. Then you are children of God already. Can I show you a simple prayer that you can remember easier? Okay, you can sing with me too. Okay? Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins and come into my heart and give me eternal life and bless my life. Thank you, Jesus. I worship the Father. I love the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we can just pray, Jesus forgive us, give us eternal life, and uh, please bless us, and thank God, then He will hear your prayer. Amen. So are you willing to try to go to church with me, and then learn more about Jesus? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and God can bless you more. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, now, so very important that you train your church member to do that. And train a group of prayer warriors. Minister to people. And then, maybe you start with one or two or three. And gradually you build up on that. And you practice in the church. Pray with each other for a stronger presence of God. That way, the power of God will be stronger upon you and bless your church. Okay, so you have to lead the church. You cannot just leave them to do it. You 
You must be the one who has the courage to go and do it. Whenever I visit one, one person, I will pray for the whole family if possible. I have brought many families to Christ. So God bless your churches. Hallelujah! Yeah.